Every now and then, after really tough losses, I'll come on here and say only the Seattle Mariners could lose a game like that. Well, tonight, I think, was a game that only the Seattle Mariners could win a baseball game like that. What is up? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back and welcome into the Seattle Mariners post-game recap. As always, before I dive any further into this, do me a favor, smash that like button, subscribe if you're new. I'm less than 300 subs away from 4,000, and comment your thoughts on the game down below. This is probably going to be a very, very quick post-game recap. I've been up since 4. We've got to get up early again tomorrow. Uh, me and the Mrs. Trident podcast have to do a presentation for work. We work together now, which is actually really, really cool, because um, that's what you guys came here to listen to. But this is probably like a five, six minute recap. I am exhausted, but the Mariners get a huge win three to two over the Minnesota twins. They are back to 10 games over 500 at 47 and 37 Houston and Texas both lose. I told you guys, eventually they would lose again. So Seattle's now five and a half up on Houston and nine games up on the Texas Rangers. That was not pretty. It wasn't the offense was bad. I actually don't even think Logan Gilbert was at his best tonight. Now, it shows how good Logan Gilbert is. That again, I thought he was kind of eh, but still found a way to go six innings, only giving up two runs. So I'm not taking away from Logan at all. Stanek was really good. Munoz was good. Voth was good. But Maris did not hit the ball very hard. In fact, I think expected batting average from Savant. Let's go to Savant for this one because I am curious. And again, expected batting average is not everything, but it can sometimes tell you a little bit of a story. Expected batting average tonight. Twins was 314, so they were hitting the ball pretty hard. The Mariners, 163. They probably got lucky when they scored their first run because Mitch Hanniger should have been out by a mile. Their second run was scored on, I'm not going to call that a double play ball with Julio Speed, but a little infield chopper that was thrown away. And even the winning run was scored on a Cal Raleigh hit that was hit, uh, let's see, with a 61 exit velo. Did have a 320 expected batting average because of how weakly it was hit. Um, but yeah, and the Minnesota Twins scored their two runs on a bomb off the bat of Carlos Correa and hit a lot of line drives all over the park. Now, I'm not saying any of this to be negative. It's not, because you know what? Right now, it does not matter. There is 78 games to go in the season. You are fighting for a division title. Yes, they need to overall play better than they did tonight because I, I get it. Like, oh, they can't play this win the playoffs. Sure, fine, whatever. I, I don't think they played great tonight, but they got a huge, huge win against a team that's been a thorn in their side in Minnesota. And a series where the next two games, you've got Bryce Miller going tomorrow. He's been struggling of late. You are going to be facing who's going for the Twins tomorrow. Let's see if I can find that here. Sorry. So I want to pull up who Minnesota is throwing tomorrow. It is going to be, it is uh, Pablo Lopez against Bryce Miller. That's an advantage for Minnesota. And then Sunday is going to be, um, is it Jake Ryan? It's Jake Ryan, right? Joe Ryan. Sorry. Joe Ryan, who has been pretty good, really good this year, the three, three, one ERA against probably Emerson Hancock. They could go with Luis Castillo. Um, it would actually be on normal rest, but they may just want to with some of the fatigue and the fact they just played 39 games in 41 days before yesterday. That may be something where they want to go ahead and just give Castillo the extra day's rest. So there's a decent chance you have Lopez. Well, not a decent chance. You do have Lopez versus Miller tomorrow and a decent chance it's Ryan against Emerson Hancock on Sunday. If you don't win tonight, you are possibly staring at a sweep. So that's why this was a huge win, number one. Number two, Houston and Texas lost. Guys, there's only 78 games left. That's still a lot, but we are into the second half of the season. And any day that you can you know, leave this day and this baseball day is over and the Mariners' lead has grown in the division is a great thing. And this is, again, why that 10-game lead does factor in. Yes, this last week was brutal. Houston went like 8-0 and you went 3-6. and six. The Mariners looked awful on the road trip. Houston was amazing. And yet we come back from this. We play, you know, one game, the, the road trip. Houston has their streak. And then you have this game tonight and you leave the day. You're up five and a half games, which is a pretty, pretty nice lead. It's not the 10 it was a few weeks ago or a few weeks ago, a week and a half ago. Sorry, guys. If I'm again, really tired. So I apologize. This is all over the place. 
but that's where it does factor in because there are going to be days when you win and Houston doesn't, and you can still grow that lead potentially. So this was actually a really, really huge win for the Seattle Mariners and one that I do think they needed to find a way to get it done. And they did, like I said, pretty no, but you know, enough to get a W and when you're fighting for the division title and you're fighting for a playoff spot, you know, I, I don't really care. I'd rather win ugly than lose beautiful. I would rather do it. And I will say this to the Mariners credit. I, I thought they, they did have some, um, they put some pressure on some good relievers late. You know, did they hit the snot out of the ball against Griffin Jacks in the eighth inning to get the tying run? No, but what they did do in the eighth inning is I'm pulling up the box score here. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Mitch Haniger worked a real nice walk. He actually probably should have walked on four pitches, but uh, Ramon DeJesus, the home plate umpire, was not very good. Works walk. Josh Rojas does have a solid base hit. And then here's the thing. Like, you know, and uh, JP Bunt popped out. I thought that was kind of a weird decision. I will say this. I know I've met a lot of people asking, why don't the Mariners bunt more? I, I do think you can kind of see. I I'm not against bunting. I'm not. I think it can work in certain situations. But it can also backfire at times. JP popped up a bunt. Luke Rayleigh bunted in the ninth inning as a sacrifice. And the Mariners didn't score a run because you're facing Duran, who's a really good strike thrower, hard thrower, gets a lot of strikeouts. So the, the bunt giveth and the bunt can take it away. You know, I'm, I'm all for bunting for a base hit. I'm not against sacrifice bunting in certain situations. But just know, because I've had some people ask me, well, Jay, why don't you bunt there? You get a run. You're never guaranteed to score a run even when you're bunting. It, it doesn't work that way. There is no guarantee to score a run. Um, I, I don't even think it was a bad decision to have Luke. I know I'm jumping all over the place here. I don't even think it was necessarily a bad decision to have Luke Rayleigh bunt. I think his shoulder's probably bothering him. He's fast enough. He can beat it out. And I get trying to move the runners up there. Sack fly wins the game against a really good pitcher in Duran. But he strikes out Rojas, and, and then boom, that bunt is kind of worthless at that point. So you could argue you're better off giving Rayleigh a shot to swing the bat. Nobody out. You got three chances to get a base hit. All I'm saying, not against it, but just, I, I, again, I have a lot of people that will ask me about bunting and it is not guaranteed to get you a run. So just so you know, when they don't bunt, you know, kind of look at what happened today a little bit. But anyways, going back to that eighth inning, uh, JP bunt pops out after the Rojas single. Now I do think JP was kind of trying to bunt for a base hit there. I thought he showed the bunt a little late. So I do think it was kind of a mix of move the runner over, but also trying to bunt for a base hit. He pops out. Listen, Julio reaches on the error. I actually am going to give Julio some credit there. I'm, I'm trying to find silver linings with guys. You know, Julio's not had a great season, but he worked a good count against Jax. Got to three and one. And it goes to show that if you can put the ball in place, sometimes good things happen. Julio's speed made Miranda rush the throw a little bit. Um, I don't think Luke Rayleigh, Rayleigh was out of the base paths on that play. Uh, Miranda tried to go to tag him. Rayleigh has a right to try and get out of the way of that. So I thought that was fair and the right call. But you put the ball in play and sometimes good things can happen. Now, did Julio hit the snot out of that ball? Of course not. I'm not going to send that to the Hall of Fame and go, wow, look at Julio here. But he did put the ball in play and good things can happen. And with your speed, you get on, forced to throw away. Or, you know, Santana was able to pick it out. Maybe it wasn't Julio's speed. Maybe it was just a bad play by the Twins. But either way, put the ball in play, put the game in motion. Good things happen. Um, there for the Mariners. Uh, then they walked Cal Raleigh, Garver and Canzone made outs. Uh, Canzone's at bat was really, really bad in the eighth inning. Garver's was bad too. Uh, I thought Garver's was actually a better at bat though. He didn't go up there just hacking. Um, now Garver was in a better spot because you get a deep fly ball there. You take the lead. Um, but he at least, you know, had a little better idea up there. Canzone's at bat against Griffin Jacks was like, that, that at-bat's enough to make you go, dude, send the guy down. That's how bad that at-bat was. Now, Griffin Jack's a really good reliever. Um, so some good things there for the Mariners. Mitch Hanniger works the walk. Rojas single. Julio at least puts it in play and, and lets, you know, lets his speed do some work there. And, and it paid off for the Mariners. So, you know, not terrible there uh, in the eighth inning. Munoz does a nice job in the ninth. Thought Munoz looked good with a shutout inning, uh, especially after, not yesterday, but uh, Wednesday. I didn't think Munoz looked all that sharp. And then, oh, guys, I'm sorry. I am, whew, I'm blowing this one. Uh, nah, I don't think Munoz looked all that sharp. Munoz was awful on Wednesday, walking the first two guys and hitting uh, hitting the third guy. I, I love Munoz. He's probably going to be at the All-Star game as he should be, but that was not a little off on Wednesday. That was bad. 
Nice bounce back from Munoz today. Long, long way for me to say that. Bottom of the ninth, you know, Ty France, solid base hit off of Duran's uh, curveball. That was good. Polanco, button hit. I don't know if Polanco was trying to sacrifice or trying to get a hit there, but Jorge Polanco has done nothing this year, so I will take any way he can get on base at all. And I think that's kind of the thing with Julio in that eighth inning. Was that a great at-bat? No, but I'm looking for anything. Julio's had a tough season. Put the ball in play, make things happen. So Polanco does a nice job there. Rayleigh with the sack bunt. Then Rojas strikes out and JP grounds out. Again, the bunt giveth, the bunt kind of taketh away. Um, I get the idea of the bunt there. You know, a couple people suggested on Twitter, maybe you have Rojas kind of suicide squeeze in that spot to get the run in. I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe something to think about. I know that's all easier said than done, but that might've been a decent spot for something like that uh, for Rojas to lay one down and see, see what happens. Essentially, that's how they won the game. Cal Raleigh, essentially a swinging bunt to win it in the 10th. Uh, top of the 10th, guy that deserves a huge shout out is Ryan Stanek. It is not easy to pitch in extra innings and more with that inherited runner. Look at the Mariners, right? Uh, I think it was Colin Sands that pitched for the Twins. Julio grounded out, routine to shortstop, and Cal Raleigh swinging bunt. The ball game's over. Sands did his job for Minnesota. He got a ground out and a weak, and a weak grounder, and he gives up a run. So Stanek deserves a ton of credit for getting out of that 10th inning. Anytime you can, especially when you're the home team, you've got to get out of that 10th inning or any inning in extra innings without giving up a run. It is huge. And Ryan Stanek has really, really gone from, you know, yeah, he's all right. Get the job done to, man, I trust this guy. And you talk about MVPs of this team. Now, in terms of like, if you want to go by something like F4 or something, no, no relievers ever going to accumulate the most war on a team. But Andres Munoz and Ryan Stanek. Now, Munoz, I think, was kind of expected, not taking that away from him, that he's been great. But I think we knew Munoz, Munoz is good. We weren't sure with Stanek. And my gosh, has Stanek been a huge boost with the Brash and Santos injuries. By the way, it sounds like Santos is getting closer. Please hurry back. Um, man, it would be great. And in some ways, Santos coming back later in the year, if he looks healthy and is sharp, Missing that time might not be the worst thing because you might get a fully ramped up Santos now for the rest of the season, which would be a huge, huge boost to this bullpen. But man, I cannot say enough good things about Ryan Stanek this year. Uh, uh, I Probably not an MVP, but man, if you had to put like, what, what's like the unsung hero award for the Mariners? Probably Ryan Stanek this year. Yeah, and then the bottom of the 10th, Julio grounds out, good base running by JP gets to third and more good run base running by JP on the Cal ground out. Mariners win. Like I said, n- not pretty, but you know, if this team was 42 and well, not 42, like 28 and 54, pff, I'd go, yeah, they still stink. You know, that's the type of game that doesn't change anything. This game doesn't change any way I feel about this team, but their playoff odds just shot up tremendously. I can promise you that gaining a game is we're in the second half of the year is absolutely going to boost those odds, boost those odds. Was it a great game? Mm, no, you know, but the result was fantastic. Fantastic. And Logan Gilbert does deserve credit too. Six innings, four hits, two runs, two or no walk, three Ks. Like I said, I didn't think he looked fantastic. Thought he gave up some hard contact, uh, not a ton of strikeouts, but the Twins are a tough lineup. You look at their numbers in June, they've been like the best offense in baseball. You can make a case for it in June. So any way you can find a way to get outs against them. And they're such a left-handed heavy lineup that they have been torture on the Mariners pitching staff, you know, when they've played them the past few years. So Logan does deserve a lot of credit for that. I just don't think he's at his sharpest tonight. Um, but I, what have I said many times? Sometimes how you measure a pitcher is how good are they when they don't have their best stuff. These are major league pitchers. Every single pitcher, if they are dialed in, can get outs. You know, I said I'm worried about Bryce Miller tomorrow against the Twins lineup, and I and I am a little bit. But if Bryce Miller's dialed in, he's more than capable of shutting down the lineup. You know, Marco Gonzalez dialed in, was capable. But how good are you when you don't have your best stuff? And Logan Gilbert just gave you six innings of two-run ball. Pretty darn impressive. Great win for the Mariners. Get another one tomorrow. Let's keep it going. This went a little bit longer than I thought. Again, guys, I am very sorry if I was a little all over the place in this one. Like I said, I've been been up since four. I've got to get up again in a few hours. So long day for me. Um, Flying on some coffee right now. You can probably tell. (laughs) So uh, love you all. Like, comment, subscribe. And hopefully tomorrow's post-game recap will be a little bit more 
a little less hectic, for lack of a better term. Love y'all. Enjoy the W. What? That's one more thing I'll say. Despite me saying I don't think they played their best game, and I don't think they did, but you should always, always enjoy when your team wins a game. Have a good night, everybody. Go Mariners. Peace.